Universal among almost all MMORPGs is the desire to collect mounts. In fact, often the first goal many new players will set for themselves is getting a different mount than the default. Something made rather easy in 14 as there are a good variety of unique and high quality mounts, many of which are available to the player before they ever finish A Realm Reborn. In fact, some can even be obtained before ever starting the game. The recruiter friend system is something you'll see in many different online games and the concept is always the same. A friend recruits you to try a game and both of you receive rewards. For 14, these rewards come in the form of items that provide bonuses for new players and encourage playing with the recruiter. Both parties also receive two types of chocobo feather currencies that can be exchanged for different rewards. The silver feathers can be traded for ketchup gear, making it easier for new players to progress to the game, while the gold feathers can be traded for more cosmetic rewards such as expensive dyes and more notably, mounts. For 8 gold feathers, you can either buy the Amber Drought Chocobo, one of the rare multi-seater mounts, or the Managarm. And while both are nice, they fall short of the much more expensive Twin Tanya, which can be acquired for 15 gold feathers. Now, if you are recruited by a friend, as long as they have been subscribed for at least 270 days, you will receive 15 feathers, meaning you can choose whichever mount appeals to you the most. Though, assuming you've already started your journey, then there are a handful of mounts that the game just gives you. They simply need to be collected. First of which likely available, more so if you started as a conjurer, is going to be the Unicorn. By leveling a conjurer to level 30, a quest can be acquired called Unicorn Power. This quest will have you journey into the Shroud and heal an injured Unicorn that afterwards will join you as a mount. Returning to Gridania, there are three more mounts that can be obtained, all of which are sold by a special achievement vendor. Anytime you talk to Jonathus, he will reward you with achievement certificates depending on how many achievements you have obtained which you'll naturally get just by playing. These certificates can be used by the different items that he sells, including the Behemoth Warhorn, the Magitek Deathclaw Identification Key, and the Void Resignator. Though not always available, pay close attention to any events that might be going on in the game. Throughout the year, a variety of events are hosted. Some are static, like holidays and anniversaries, while others are usually surprise crossovers. Normally, at least one of the holiday events in a year will reward a mount. Last year, we were given a polar bear for the spring event, and the year before that, we were given a snowman for the Christmas event. This year, we're supposed to be getting another Christmas mount in the Starlight Steed, so be on your lookout for it during the holidays. As for the crossover events, though much rarer, you can almost always expect one of the rewards to be a mount. The Final Fantasy XV event gave us the Regalia, the Yokai Watch event gave us the Whisper Go, the Whisper Go Go, and the Jibian Couch. And as for the current crossover event, it is the Garu event, which is a popular Japanese TV show. Unfortunately, this event does require a level 60 job, as to acquire the three mounts in the event, you have to win PvP matches while wearing a specific title. These titles are obtained by buying a full set of Garo armor, including the weapon, from this NPC in the Wolf's Den. After equipping the set, you just need to present yourself to the NPC who will give you one of these special titles. And if you've done all this, you just need to go into PvP while the title is equipped and get some wins. Speaking of which, there are a good few amounts available to you once you unlock PvP, which can be done as early as level 30. Now, the easiest of these is going to be the Magitek Sky Armor that can be bought with the PvP currency Wolf Marks. The nice part about this mount is you'll be able to acquire it whether you win or lose, as just playing PvP gives you Wolf Marks. So, if you just do your frontline roulette each day, in a week or so, you should be able to get the mount. If you find yourself enjoying PvP, then you should consider giving Crystalline Conflict a go. This game mode has much more personal responsibility compared to the mess that is frontline, but the matches as a result are much faster, making obtaining the achievement mounts for this game mode much more realistic than that of the frontline ones. If you manage to win 200 matches of Crystalline Conflict, then you'll be rewarded with the Gloria class airship. Now, this may seem like a lot, but consider that a match of Crystalline Conflict is normally less than five minutes, and in some cases, you'll be done with a match in less than a minute. Whether you choose to play only Frontline or both game modes, something to keep your eye on is the PvP Series Pass, which can be found in the PvP profile. The Pass offers different rewards each series, which is usually a patch cycle. Last series, the big reward was a unique Glamour set, but this time around, it's a Dragon Mount. This may be something you want to work on throughout a patch if the big reward interests you. To build a pass is like getting wolf marks, meaning you just have to play PvP, you don't need to worry about winning to get your prize. You can also use the trophy crystals provided by the pass to gain some extra wolf marks to maybe get your sky armor a bit faster, or alternatively, use them to get some nice glamours from the PvP vendor. Moving back to solo content, let's go over the gold saucer, which is effectively a giant arcade. And like any arcade, it offers a range of different prizes. 
including six different mounts, the Adamantois, the Typhon, the Corpacor, the Archon Throne, the Fenrir, and the Sabatender Imperador. To buy any of these mounts, you need to use a unique currency to the saucer called MGP. MGP can be gained by doing any of the events located in the saucer along with completing the challenge log. Now, all the mounts require a large amount of MGP to purchase, with the cheapest being 200k and the most expensive being 2 million. Thankfully, you can get over a 100k a week just by doing your challenge log, your weekly and daily lotteries, and most importantly, the fashion report, which itself can give up to 60k. Now, continuing our list of solo content mounts is Beast Tribes. In ARR, there are five Beast Tribes available to you, each with their own unique mount themed around the tribe. The Pixies give you the Gubu, the Sahagen give you the Calvary Elps, the Ixil give you the Direwolf, the Amalja give you the Calvary Drake, and the Cobalts give you the Bomb Palaquin. Each one of the mounts can be bought from their corresponding tribes upon raising your reputation with them to Trusted. This is done by doing daily quests provided by the tribe that give reputation along with unique currencies tied to the tribe. However, the AR Beast tribes are much more tedious than their future iterations, and as a result, many choose to skip them. But don't worry, because there is actually another way to obtain the mounts from these tribes. Our last method of attaining mounts goes back to the different events held throughout the year. One of these is a mini event called the Moogle Treasure Trove. During this event, players will be rewarded with special tombstones by doing a variety of different content, and these tombstones can be exchanged at one of the Moogle vendors found in each of the major city-states. The items that can be bought change every time the event comes around, but you can almost always expect a variety of mounts and glamours. The mounts sold normally fall into two categories. The more expensive ones are usually mounts that require a good bit of farming like Stormblood Extremes or other rare drops, while the cheaper mounts are almost always the ARR Beast Tribes and occasionally the Heavensward slash ARR Extremes. Now, if none of the options available in the event appeal to you, there are other things you can do with these tombstones that still revolve around getting mounts, as you can buy a gold saucer ticket. Each one of these tickets can be redeemed for 50k MGP, making it a great time to try for those more expensive gold saucer mounts. And that is everything that a new player can reasonably set up to obtain. The most difficult of these will likely be the PvP based mount, so on the right is going to be a frontline guide, and on the left is going to be a crystalline conflict guide. Hopefully these will help ease any anxiety or answer any questions you may have about PvP. Either way, thanks for watching and enjoy your mount hunting.